Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matt Capucci. If you've seen The Wizard of Oz, odds are you know that Kansas has a lot of tornadoes. So does Oklahoma. But believe it or not, the term Tornado Alley is an outdated relic of the past. Tornado risk covers a lot more of the United States than one might think, and Oklahoma actually isn't the bullseye. By the way, if you're joining us on YouTube, be sure to like the video and subscribe to our channel. Tornado season is really ramping up, and you'll want all of our explainers and our analysis. We have a lot to talk about here, but first I want to discuss where the term Tornado Alley actually came from. It originated in 1948 when a pair of research scientists used it in what may have been the first real scientific project on tornadoes. Air Force officers Ernest J. Fabush and Robert C. Miller were commissioned to begin producing severe weather forecasts for Tinker Air Force Base in Oklahoma City after it was hit by a damaging tornado on March 20, 1948. Just five days later, the pair produced their first tornado outlook and, in a true bout of meteorological fortuity, a tornado once again hit the base. Fast forward to February 15, 1952, and the pair began issuing weather forecasts for a region between Nebraska and Texas they dubbed Tornado Alley. From there, the term stuck. It was picked up by media, cited in literature, and really grandfathered in. But the geographical area they define only accounts for a sliver of tornado risk in the United States and doesn't even count the bullseye zone, but the term's popularity continued to grow. It was made worse by the media, who routinely chose high contrast photos of tornadoes over the plains to publish. Think about the 1939 Wizard of Oz. You can see that fictionalized tornado for miles. Most tornadoes in the eastern or southeastern United States are grungy, wrapped in rain or tough to see, and so the media even nowadays rarely shows them. The best videos come from the wide open plains, where you have tall high cloud bases and fewer trees. Now think about it, if we had the term Tornado Alley and people between 1950 and roughly 1990 or 2000 only see pictures and videos of tornadoes in the plains, what's going to happen? The erroneous idea of a maximum tornado risk being constrained to an alley is going to be reinforced. The phrase Tornado Alley even appears in some official documentation by the National Weather Service. Now let's discuss where tornadoes actually form. It's true that Oklahoma and Kansas get a ton of tornadoes. Look at this map. You can see in purple that a number of EF5s have torn through the Interstate 35 corridor. More Oklahoma was hit by EF5s in 1999 and 2013, and some homes were leveled twice. The Oklahoma City Metro averages a couple of tornadoes every year. But also notice a concentration of EF5s in places like Mississippi and Alabama. Some can be seen in Pennsylvania, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and even Michigan. You might also notice the path lengths in the Deep South tend to be a little bit longer. So what's going on? Well, we can toss the idea of an alley out the window. In fact, tornado risk occupies an area more in the shape of a mitten, but frankly, tornado mitten doesn't sound that scary. Aside from a little bit of a drop off in Missouri due to the Ozark Plateau, and a local minimum in West Virginia due to the Appalachians, there's really no distinction between tornado incidents over the plains, the Corn Belt, the Midwest, and the Deep South. Now, the tornadoes in the Deep South are arguably more dangerous than those in the plains. Why though? Let's begin with the terrain of the South. It's not prairie like in the central US, it's rolling hills, or in northeast Alabama and northwest Georgia, the foothills of the Appalachians, borderline mountains. There are rivers and valleys and the forests are thick and verdant. It's tough to see more than 500 feet in any given direction, with trees blocking the sky view. That makes obtaining tornado pictures or videos challenging, hence why we rarely see them in the media. The tornadoes themselves are different too. The parent supercell storms are more likely to be moisture loaded with rain that obscures the spinning updraft. That and the gulf moisture means the cloud bases are much lower. The result? Rain wrapped tornadoes that even without trees would be virtually impossible to see. You also have ground scraping mesocyclones, i.e. the column of rotation within the storm. So at this point, if we have two tornadoes of equal strength move through an area with the same population density on the plains versus the deep south, the latter would likely be more hazardous. One you might be able to see, the other not so much. Now let's talk time of year. On the plains, most tornadoes occur during late April or the month of May. That creates a very dense tornado season with barrage after barrage of swarming twisters. People really hold their breath for about six weeks, but after that, it's mostly over. In the deep south, tornado season stretches up to seven months from November through early June. On January 25th, 2021, for instance, a deadly EF3 tore through Fultondale, Alabama. It's very difficult to live in a heightened state of awareness for seven months of the year. And because a lot of tornadoes in the Deep South occur during the cold season, they move more quickly. 
That's because the jet stream is in closer proximity, so they get dragged along more swiftly. Resultantly, they cover more ground, exposing more population. They also tend to be stronger. Grady Dixon, a researcher at Fort Hayes State University in Kansas, finds that any given square kilometer of land is more likely to be affected by a tornado in the Deep South versus the Plains due to those factors. Furthermore, a disproportionately higher percentage of tornadoes in the Deep South are quick-forming brief spin-ups along squall lines. We call these QLCS, or Quasi-Linear Convective System, tornadoes. A new study to investigate these kicked off on March 1st. The tornadoes don't require as much instability or juice to form, making it possible for them to take place at any hour of the day. Moreover, they develop more abruptly, leading to lesser lead times and higher false alarm rates. National Weather Service offices have become adroit at spotting their early signatures and issuing warnings, but inevitably a large number still falls through the cracks. Time of day also plays a critical role. Over the plains, the lack of daytime heating usually causes tornado risk to wane after 9 or 10 p.m. Obviously, if you're awake, you have a better chance of surviving a tornado. In the Deep South, however, more than a third of tornadoes occur at night, making them twice as deadly. That's yet another factor to consider. So to summarize, in the Deep South, you have just as many tornadoes as in Oklahoma, slightly stronger tornadoes, tornadoes with longer path lengths, tornadoes that are tougher to see, tornadoes that move more quickly, tornadoes that develop more quickly, and a higher frequency of nighttime tornadoes. That's not a good recipe. Putting it all together, that leads to tornado risk being higher than in Oklahoma or Kansas. Now we have to talk about tornado vulnerability. It's a very different thing. That's a product of how well prepared people are for tornadoes. In Mississippi, Alabama, and much of the Southeast, there are systems in place working against residents. Consider housing type. In Oklahoma, about 7% of residences are mobile homes or manufactured homes. In Mississippi, nearly 15%. And in the Deep South, there aren't really mobile home communities built around community shelters. Many families live in very rural areas or off the grid entirely in winding forest roads, but they have a mobile or manufactured home. They need longer than 15 or even 20 minutes to get to a good shelter in the advance of a tornado. If tornado warnings had to be issued that far in advance, the false alarm rate would skyrocket and public complacency would go through the roof. Population density also needs to be added to the equation. In Oklahoma or Kansas, most residents live near town centers with farms scattered about the countryside. In the Deep South, subdivisions are rarer, with homes more scattered about the landscape. In Oklahoma, a tornado could touch down in a field and miss everybody. Once in a while, you might have one make a direct hit on town. In the Deep South, even if a tornado misses the town center, it might still hit half a dozen or a dozen homes. To make matters worse, there's even emerging research that suggests tornadoes may be becoming more frequent in the Deep South and Southeast. Steven Strader and Walker Ashley are two of the most preeminent researchers at the Center of Exploring Tornado Risk and Vulnerability in the Deep South. Check out this map they published in the Bulletin of the American Meteorological Society in 2016 showing EF1 Plus killer tornadoes. Where's the bullseye? Alabama. Here they plot the density of mobile homes. The National Weather Service also published this map outlining the average number of killer tornadoes per state. Alabama and Tennessee take the top spots, not Oklahoma or Kansas. The pair also warns that urban sprawl in a number of U.S. cities is making the risk of tornado fatalities skyrocket. Let's consider deadly tornadoes in the past several years. We'll start with 2021. A staggering 101 people died in tornadoes. None were in Tornado Alley. You might remember the Mayfield, Kentucky tornado in December. Not traditional Tornado Alley, but rather the Mid-South. How about 2020? A similar pattern. Nashville and Cookville, Tennessee were hit by tornadoes that, despite coming from supercells, were accompanied by little advance warning in the late overnight period of March 2nd into March 3rd. Two dozen people died as a result. Then we had the Easter Sunday tornado outbreak that year on April 12th. A pair of massive VF4 tornadoes car paths that took them through South Central Mississippi. Two tornado emergencies were issued contemporaneously, the second tornado tracking more than 80 miles. It became the nation's third largest tornado on record at 2.25 miles in diameter. 11 people died between the two. And nobody can forget what happened in Lee County, Alabama on March 3rd, 2019. An EF4 was on the ground for nearly 69 miles and killed 23 people. The tornado was preceded by prescient forecasts and great warnings with up to 20 minutes of lead time. That said, it passed over a rural landscape with winding roads and a plethora of mobile homes. Look at Strader's findings, though. Anything you see here in yellow is a mobile or manufactured home. The crosses are fatalities. The tornado passed through an area known for its high density of mobile homes. 
19 of the 23 deaths occurred in mobile or manufactured housing. So putting it all together, a few takeaways. There is no tornado alley. We can hatch a new term like tornado country, but that'd be futile. Just remember that much of the central and eastern U.S. gets tornadoes. My family, for example, lives on Cape Cod, Massachusetts, and they've had to shelter from tornado-worn storms every year since at least 2017. It's a real thing even there. We also need to recognize that tornadoes don't usually look like the classic Wizard of Oz elephant trunk or stovepipe. More often than not, they're concealed by trees, low clouds, rain, or darkness. Lastly, it's vital that everyone have a tornado plan in place before an outbreak occurs or a warning is issued. If you live in a mobile or manufactured home, this might mean getting ready to spend the afternoon closer to a site-built location if you know that a tornado warning could be issued and the lead time wouldn't be enough for you to get to shelter. The more advanced planning you have, the better. In the coming weeks, we'll be teaching about some of the features we have in the MyRadar app to help keep you and your family safe. We'll also have coverage from the field and the studio throughout the season. Remember, we're with you every step of the way. Follow MyRadar on social media. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download MyRadar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.